Hello, hello. Listen, I know you wanna check out this message, but before you do, I wanna invite you to come check us out in person. Here at Free Life Chapel, we're all about family and would love to connect with you face to face. So if you're ever in the Central Florida area, come check us out. Here at FLC, we wanna help you discover and live the free life in Christ. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how you can be a part, Check us out at freelifechapel.org. Until then, check out this message. Back in school myself right now. Pray for your boy. I live in Polk County and I'm studying Hebrew. I'm not sure how those two go together. But I promise you this. It's taken some work. It's, for those of you college, it's a three-hour course, but I promise you I will spend 10 to 12 hours a week studying for this, for this course. It's owning me. I, I can't get this degree by studying one hour a week. How, how many of you know that you do not want, there's no attorney, no one practicing law that passed the bar by studying one hour a week? How do you know you don't want to go see a doctor? <laughs> who prepared one hour a week? An electrician who studies their craft one hour a, a week. You're never going to get fit, strong, by just doing it one hour a week. You can't expect to accelerate in your career by just doing it right one hour a week. You want to see what the result of that is? Look at the Dallas Cowboys. One hour a week. No, I'm sorry, I shouldn't go there. You, you, can't, you can't. I'm sorry, come back to church. You, I, I, I had to. It's the NFL season. I, I had to go there. But watch, 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 watch. If, if in your marriage you only talk one hour a week, it's not working. You can't build a business on one hour a week. For anything to grow, it requires an investment of time. What makes us think we can grow spiritually by hanging with God one hour a week? And I think that my spirit life is going to grow with one hour a week. When Jesus called the disciples, he, told, he said, y'all, come with me. I want you to spend 168 hours a week with me. We're going to just kind of dig in there. In other words, for the next three years, we're going to travel together. We're going to eat dinner together. We're going to sleep at the same time. We're going to teach together. We're going to serve together. We're going to go hard because if I'm going to get you ready in three years, I need to own you, prepare you so that you can do this thing called life that I'm leading you into. In other words, let me put, just put it this way. We can't become more like Jesus until we give him more time. I don't know how, 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 how better, how more plain to make it. If you and I are not investing in our time with God, there is no way that I'm going to experience more of God. People that we, that we look to, that man, their prayer life, man, I just, I just love and respect their relationship. Man, I wish I could get there. I wonder how God healed that. I wonder how God did that. I promise you, it wasn't by, 15, by a 15-minute bump. It was by somebody who said, I want to know him. I'm going to give him my thoughts. I'm going to give him my words. I'm giving him me. I want to give him the focus of my life. This week... I got a one-word text message from my mother. Y'all got that? Hello. <laughs> now, that's a screenshot of the text message that I got this week from my mother. It said, hello, and I shot back, hey, mama, I plan on calling you in just a little bit. That's me trying to get off the hook because I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> Will you be available to chat? Sure. How do you know when she said hello, she was not saying hi? She wasn't, she wasn't checking on me. She was saying, you better call me right now. Do you understand? That, that's what that was. That, that's what that was. Y'all need to check your voicemail, check your text message from heaven right now. Heaven's going, hello. In, 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 other, words, in other words, if God is your father, then you should call home every now and then is what I'm trying to tell you. This, this, is, this is where relationship matters. This is why 
we pray. Why do we do it? We're developing a consciousness and awareness of God. I've got to make him more real in my life because circumstances and people and social media and busyness and kids and all of life will come at you and rob your attention and break your focus. And you and I have to fight for our attention and awareness of God because if we're not aware of God, then we are unaware of God. And there is a thing I'm going to teach soon called the law of recognition. Everything you need is in your life, but if you don't recognize it, you can't have it. You're missing nothing in life. It's all there, but if you can't see it, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not a lack of resource. Unaware. Be scary to think that the thing that you need the most is in your house. You eat beside it, you sleep beside it, there, and you never identified it. See, prayer is broader than what you're thinking and what we typically think. We think you've got to be on your knees. Cindy's grandmother used to tell her all the time, if you would just get on your knees, God would hear your prayers better. Because that's, that's what the old saints used to think. They, you had to be on your knees, and, and it was a reverence. It was a holy thing. It, it wasn't being hard. But, yet that's a, but, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, I found out Jesus will hear you when you're standing up. And he'll hear you when you're laying face down. Oh, he heard me when I was laying on my back and I was filling my ears full of tears that they were puddling in my... Y'all ever cried so hard this way that the the tears were puddling in your ears? You ever done that? Oh, you ought to try that. That's fun. And like just, it just, 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 it's just a mess. Like, I'm just telling you, 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 in in your car, at work, you ever just got, excuse me, you got to, you take a break because you need to go to the bathroom, but you pray, you get the Jesus, Jesus, and you just got to talk to Jesus in the stall for a minute. See, prayer is broader. Here's what prayer is. Intentionally and regularly expressing my heart to God. And I want you to understand when I say expressing your heart, that's through your words, yes, but that's through your thoughts. I'm conscious of God. I'm thinking about God. This one, the Bible says, pray continually. Pray without ceasing. That's how you do this. It's not that you're on your knees all day long, but I've got a God awareness about me. I'm conscious that he's thinking of me. It's when I'm worshiping, when we're singing worship songs, that is, biblically, that is prayer because I'm connected to him. I'm aware. I'm focused. I'm calling on him. That's exactly what this is. If you're singing a song by yourself, if you're just talking to him, going down the road God I love you just just, thanks for the day thanks for all of it all of that is what prayer is here's the struggle the struggle with prayer is our God awareness because we do get so divided you know why we get divided you have two hearts in in, in, in Jesus' culture in Jesus' teaching you have two inclinations we, we, we don't want to talk about one of them, but I'm going to go ahead and expose both of them because the Bible says in the book of Galatians that these two hearts, these two inclinations are described this way. One is the flesh, the other is the spirit. Now, I need to help you with something. I need you to get flesh out of your mind. I mean, bad, bad, bad. Stop that. Right. Yeah, we, we, we've got to stop downgrading and slamming because God is the one who gave that to you. You're made body, soul, spirit. I don't want you to just come against that. The flesh is the thing that's the, that's the survival. That's where your talents, your abilities, all that works. And have you know you can use what's good in you for bad? Anybody ever done that? Nod your head, say amen, uh-huh, kick somebody. We, we all have used our abilities to do what's bad. You can, got, you can get a guy that's running the streets and dealing drugs hard. He's using his business acumen for the wrong thing. But turn that guy around and show him how to use it in the business sector, and he will be, start chains of restaurants. He'll tear it up. He, he has it. He understands. It's just misdirected. So inside of that flesh, inside of your makeup are these abilities. There is that Most of the time, according to how the book of Galatians lays it out, it's when we make it self-serving. It's me, 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 me. That's that's that flesh. And then there's that spirit side, which is God-serving. It's that focus. Both of these hearts are alive in you. In fact, do me a favor. Just look at the person beside you, you old two-hearted thing. Just just look at They they got these two hearts going on inside of them. 
They're, they're both there. And you never know which one's going to step up and lead. And I want to talk to you about that. Because Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. This is where we get the, uh, the, 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 the most... The first prayer a child is ever learns. It's the, it's the closing words that every, every Jew, that w- they want to pray as they, are, as they are passing. Scott, you talk a lot about Judaism. Jesus wasn't a Christian. He was a Jew. And we learned a lot from his culture. And so this, this passage, Jesus was taught this passage. And here's what Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 says. And Jesus actually quoted this in Matthew 22. He says, you are to love the Lord your God. Read this with me. With all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Here's what's interesting. The word heart in the Hebrew is spelled L-E-B, leb. It means the control center of your life. In this passage, it's spelled L-E-B-B. There's an added B. There's two B's added to it. And the rabbis look around and go, we don't even know what that's there. And they begin to postulate. They begin to study. And they said, you know why the additional B is there? Because when the Bible says you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, it could equally be said you are to love the Lord your God with, all of your, with both of your hearts. There was an added aspect to it to show that there's duality there, that you've got more than just one inclination. You've got two. Anybody ever realize that there's a part of you that loves God and there's a part of you that pushes back on God? Look, some of y'all ain't going to say amen to nothing I say today. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you out. I'm, I'm, I'm your friend. Like we're on the same side here. Yes, yes. There's a side of you that you're proud of, and there's a side of you you don't talk much about, right? Amen. That, 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 amen. Yeah. That, that's all of us. That's all of us. That's exactly what they're talking about here. There's these two hearts. There's these two drives. If, any, if everybody knew what you were thinking in your other heart, Watch this. Here's how, here's how the rabbis will describe this, and it fits very well into, our, into the Christian faith. Watch. One of your hearts, the flesh side of that heart. Have you notice that your physical heart is on the left side of your body? You have a heart that pulls left, and then you have Jesus and his spirit that pulls right. Look, 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 look what the word says. Look what the word says. The, the Bible says in Psalm 16, verse 8, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. Read this. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. There's a part of Scott that wants to do what feels good for me, self-serving. I like this. I want more of this. But then there's this aspect of my spirit when I've given my life to God that Jesus is at my right hand going, wait. Have you know we're a whole lot better off because we have him pulling this way instead of just letting go loose and going this way? Yeah, yeah. Because we have these two hearts in the same in the same body. There was a man that prayed to Jesus one time. He said, Lord, I believe, just help my unbelief. Like I got both issues going on at the exact same time in my life. But, but the Bible tells us this, that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. If I'm always doing this back and forth, I find myself running in circles and getting tired. And I think this life doesn't work. I have to find a place where I surrender my life and I go with the pull of Jesus. I allow him to direct and lead my life. I, I, I want to go right. My, my physical, my, 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 my uh, emotions and my, that self-serving side of scoff that gets on my nerves is always pulling left, pulling towards my impulses, pulling towards my desires, pulling towards those things that I don't want to talk about. But when I gave my life to Jesus, he steps in by his spirit and he starts to pull this way. And now I can't even fully enjoy the party because I feel bad about it. And I find myself in this kind of tug of war going on. And now I don't think the thoughts I used to think. I don't go where I used to go because I find myself leaning right now instead of, instead of just going the other way. We, we, we develop a heart for God, not just a heart for me. I start getting a different awareness, a different spirit about me. It begins to change. I start choosing God over me. So watch this. Before video games, I pray. 
I'm sorry. Let me just back up again. Before, before I hit the beach, I'm coming to church. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give God. It, it's a day of worship. I want to I wanna give him my best. You understand? I, I, I'm going to open my app and read a Devo while I'm drinking my coffee. Before I get my day going, I choose by my heart to know him. And it's in the choosing. It's in the pull. It's when I'm leaning right instead of just going in what I want to do. I do what I know I need to do. It's in this investment. It's in this awareness I begin to discover who he is and how he loves me and what life I can have I become aware and conscious of his mercy of his grace of his goodness that means I don't have time to judge anybody else I'm just glad he forgave me man and I love people and I can forgive because on this side I don't have a scorecard over here I'm pointing fingers and judging and it's legalism and it's but over here Jesus pulls on your heart and he get you into a different realm that you think different and you're aware that he's with you every minute of every day prayer is a struggle because your left heart is pulling against your right heart it's this battle of which one is going to win in my life will I keep going left or will I allow him to pull me into a new dimension of what that is my will or Jesus' will. And it's through prayer that Holy Spirit gains momentum and strength in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a massive epic battle going on for the control of your life. Control of your mind. And whatever controls your mind controls your world. You change your mind, you change your world. Change your mind, you change your marriage. Change your mind, you change your money. Change your mind, it changes your career. It changes everything. Your dating life gets better when you change your mind. You, know, you have to, would you turn to someone and tell them you really need to change? You just, you just really need to change. I'm, please. <laughs> See, watch this. Prayer is the access point where Jesus impacts your life. Prayer, communing, awareness, God consciousness. He's here. This moment matters. And it's not just on a Sunday from 9.30 to 10, uh, to, 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 to 10.30. It, it's not just that. It's, it's, I can experience this on a Monday and again on a Wednesday. I could do it again on Thursday. In fact, if I'm going to grow and advance my life, I've got to be aware and conscious more than just one day a week. I've got to know him. I, I need him in my family. I need him with these kids. I need him in this dating life. Please lean on him in your dating life so that you don't look at him in your marriage life. Where were you? Don't do that to him, right? Get it right now. He, he, he directs all when we're aware of him. And here's, here's the result. Here's what I want you to show you. Here's the results of a prayer life. There's just two things that stand out to me. When, when you're locked and loaded, when you're in that. And look, can I just put this out there for what it's worth for everybody? All the people who feel like you're not spiritual enough. All the people who feel like, man, it's just not for me. Can I tell you, everybody I know struggles to make it to a place of prayer. It ain't natural or easy for anybody. It's just, it's a, I got to decide it. I got, no, you can, you can set routines and you can set, but, but it's, it, I've even experienced in that, that prayer can feel so mechanical. Like, are you here? Where are you? We all go through that because there's another side. There's another heart pulling on us. It's not easy in that sense, but when we keep choosing, it's not, it's, it, once you're there, you never want to leave. That's why this coming week, as we get into this week of prayer, there's something about about getting in the room. And I promise you, there's a big difference between 558 and 605 this week. 558, you're sitting in the parking lot going, I don't even know if I got time for this hour prayer. I don't even know if I want to go do this. I'm here. I'll go for 15 minutes, make sure they see me so they think I'm spiritual. And so I'm going to go. And so, I'm, so you come. I talked to your kids. They told me what you said. No, 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 no. You show up. You get in here. And all of a sudden, that team starts singing that one song. You go, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What's that? Oh, 
Is that an emotion? Oh my Lord. Uh, woo. And all of a sudden, 605, 10 minutes earlier, you weren't even sure if you even knew if Jesus was alive. Now all of a sudden, I'll give you my life. It's amazing how, flip it, how, how much it can change, how it'll flip so fast. When you get in his presence, I'm aware. I've encountered him. You see, it's your job to get there. It's God's job to keep you there. I've had powerful times of prayer for 10 minutes. And I knew that heaven had touched my heart and what I was communicating, it was on. And there's been times that I've gone longer and I didn't even feel what I felt in 10 minutes. And then sometimes I've gone longer when I didn't plan on praying that long. I planned on 10 minutes and it turned into 45. When did that happen? You just don't know. But when you get there and you feel his relationship and his love, ladies and gentlemen, that is the game changer. So there's two results of a prayer life. Number one, you know God. You get to know God. You, you get to understand God. There's people that, I just, just want to, I just, I wish I understood. I just, can I tell you something? You, you can study this like crazy, but I promise you, intellect is not going to be enough to reveal his heart to you. There are intellectual idiots everywhere. They can quote the Bible, but they don't live it. They, they don't have the spirit of that love and that. Oh, they're good at using it to damage people, to attack people, to judge people, to slap people. But where's the spirit of love and unity and oneness and grace and forgiveness and mercy? That's all through this word. That only comes from a relationship with Jesus. And if you want to know what that looks like, Galatians lays out that there is the fruit of the Spirit and there are the works of the flesh. And in Galatians 5, Paul lays this out and he goes, if you want to know which heart you're living out of, then you can read the list and see what's coming out of your life and you'll know which heart is actually leading your life. Is it love, joy, peace, forgiveness? What, is that what's leading? You've got the fruit of the Spirit. That means it's a Spirit-led life. You've been pulled right by Him. That's wonderful. But there's another side, and it's a laundry list of, oh, my God, and it's been all of us have lived that life. The Bible gives us identifiers to know which one's leading our life. But relationship comes. If you're going to know God, it comes with time invested, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I celebrate you for being in God's house today. This hour matters. I look forward to Sundays. And I have to come. But I look forward to Sundays. Like, I love this. I love hanging with you. I love being in his presence with you. That's what makes us family. Some of y'all out on the streets, if I didn't know you in here, you'd be kind of sketchy. But I, but I enjoy. I enjoy this. Just look at who you're sitting beside right now. Just look at that, right? Just look at look what God has done. Amen. But if you're going to know God, it's relationship. And just like a marriage, just like a friendship, just like dating, it's going to take time. You've got to invest the time. Somebody shout time. You've got to visit him. You've got to talk to him. This years ago, it made a whole lot more sense. But it applies right now, so I'm going to throw it at you. You can't expect a FaceTime relationship with God if you're only Snapchatting with him. I'm sorry, let me just get back to this right here. So you got to know God. And number two, after you know God, you find freedom. Could anybody use some more freedom in your life? Look, some people raised two hands, one for themselves and one for their spouse. Did you see that? Like, yeah, for him. And Kate, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we all need some more freedom emotionally, spiritually, hang-ups, addictions, things that try to govern our life, that, that steal and rob, our, it's robbing our best. We need freedom, but let me help you with something. Freedom comes after knowing God. We're in a culture today, and I'm sad to say the church world we're living in today is getting better at self-help messages than we are God-knowing messages. And today the goal is to know him in the fullness of who he is and submit my life to knowing him, pursuing him, loving him. And in the process of knowing him, discovering him, I look back and I realize things fell off my life and I'm not even sure when it happened. Things that I used to struggle with, things that I used to dislike, people that got on my nerves. I can look at him with a smile now. It's wonderful when God steps in and freedom hits your life. And when this freedom hits, there's several things that come with freedom. I'm going to just give you this laundry list real quick. We're going to get out of here in the morning. Purpose hits your life. 
purpose hits your life. Direction, wisdom, fulfillment comes into your life when freedom hits. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, check this. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. When you spend time with God, you're blessed because your eyes are open and you can see the path of your life, the purpose, the reason that you're here. God reveals his ways to us through prayer, through reading your Bible, through discussing the word with a neighbor, with a friend, conversations. That is literally prayer. When you're talking about God to God, that context of your mind being aware of his goodness and his plan for your life. So number one, we actually have purpose. Number two, provision. Would it be okay if God provided some stuff in your life that God did it? Would it be okay if the rest of you don't get nothing? You didn't raise your hand, you don't get nothing. Would it be okay if God decided to provide and bless your life? Oh, look at that, a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to take whatever. Y'all don't want, I'm taking it all. Here's what the Bible says in Genesis 22, 14. Watch, Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. When Abraham took his son Isaac to the top of the mountain, obeying God, doing what God said, there was something that Abraham didn't understand. Why would God have me sacrifice my son? And God said, it's not about sacrificing your son. I'm going to sacrifice my son in time to come. It's a picture now for what's going to happen later. But while you're doing the job of just obedience and getting it in my presence I'm working on the other side of the mountain you're walking up this side and you only see that you're about to lose something when I've got a ram on the other side of the mountain who's walking up that you can't see and I got him stuck with his horns in a thicket waiting on you so that when you're about to destroy your son I'm gonna say nope got a different plan walk on the other side I've got a ram waiting on you I would know how to provide and get you out of situations you don't like I'm Jehovah Jireh the Lord who provides when you're in his presence he provides here's here's another one there's only 19 more so hold on I'm kidding peace 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 such wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. Peace. Not from a pill, not from a bottle, not from a party, not from a person, the peace giver. He says, I have a peace that comes with freedom. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, read it with me. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Circumstances are the same, but something changed when you come into his presence. Yeah, you're stronger, you're hopeful, you're restful, something, something different there. You, you understand, uh, you, you got to stop waiting on the storm to pass and learn to dance in the rain is what I'm trying to tell you. And peace has a way of settling in. You, when God brought Israel out of Egypt, he did not remove the Red Sea. He just split it down the middle and made a way through. And I don't know what you're facing today, but he has the ability to give you a peace to split your issue and walk you through what should have taken you out because his peace provides and makes a way. Here's the last one, and we'll be done with this one, protection. Protection. It comes with freedom. How do I get freedom? I know God. How do I know God? Spend time with God. How do I do that? Off your left heart, into your right heart. I choose protection. He gives his angels charge over your life. Anybody like the idea of heaven's angels keeping guard over your house? Bible, you know. Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16. Let, let me, I want to give you an illustration of how I pray the scriptures. Here, here's, here's what I do. Here's what I do. You ready? Because Scott has focused his love, 
Because Scott has focused his love on me, this is God speaking. I will deliver him. I will protect Scott because he knows my name. When Scott calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with Scott in his distress. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will deliver Scott and I will honor him. I will satisfy Scott with long life and I will show him my deliverance. That's, that's straight scripture. That's not just my opinion, that's straight scripture. See, I, I need you to help me. Would you, would you please stand to your feet, please? We, we, we're, we're going to pray today. And God's word has given us the prayer. I need you. Yeah, help me here. I need you to fill in the blank. And I need you to use your name. Nobody else's name. Don't use a fictitious name. I need your name. You understand. I want you to read this out loud. And I want you to own this. This is God's word over your life. Here's what it says. Ready? Read it with me. Because has focused on me, I will deliver I will protect because he knows my name. When calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with in distress. I will deliver and I will honor. I will satisfy with long life. I will show him my deliverance. That's your promise. That's your prayer. You can own that. That's yours. That's yours. That's yours. Do you know what gives you the right to pray and claim that prayer? The very first verse of the chapter. Here's what it says, Psalm 91.1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the All. When you become God conscious and aware because I'm in his presence. Everything that comes with his presence, you just prayed. You just declared. You have a right to this. Why would you live below your privileges? You got the key on your key ring to the bank. And you are struggling with your finances. You've got the key on your key ring to the pantry and you say you're starving. Everything you need is in your life. We need to open our eyes and realize when I know God, freedom flows. Here's the benefit package that hits my life. When I pray. You see, you access him through your prayer, through your worship, through your talk, through your reading. And it opens your heart to know him, to discover him. I get out of my heart and I get into his heart. And all of a sudden, now I'm growing in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do this. We're going to live this. And no better week to jumpstart it than this week starting tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. I want to see your hiney in this place. Do you understand me? 6 to 7 in here. Well, I can only come for 20 minutes. Then come for 20 minutes. But let's hit this. Make the decision. My left heart is not running my life. Jesus has pulled me this side. I choose. I've decided I will know him so that freedom can hit my life and I'll experience the abundance and the overflow of his benefit package. Father, I put heaven on notice. We're coming after you. The footsteps behind you, the pounding of the pavement is us chasing you. We will not live outside of every promise, blessing that you have provided. God, today, I pray you stir our hearts, challenge our minds, our spirits, elevate us to the next season of life. Let us be pulled on by your spirit that will be spirit-led, will be God-conscious, God-aware that in our singing, in our conversation, whether we're bowing before you on our knees or standing with with hands lifted or just quietly bowing our head and whispering your name all of this time of reading our Bible the meditation it's prayer focused on becoming more conscious of your love of your spirit of your plan your word for our life as we do you show up and you show off and today God we invite you into our world we're coming after you when we take a step you take two and so today God I declare that the end of this year will be the strongest I will ever be spiritually in this year. 
I will pursue you until I see the calendar flip 2025 and then I will shift gears and take it to the next level. But I will know you in the fullness of who you are. Freedom is coming on my life and my family. I will walk in your, pr uh, your purpose. I'll walk in your provision. I'm going to walk in your peace. I will have your protection. It's going to cover all that I am. I'm yours in your mind. Today, God, speak to our hearts, challenge us, awaken us, show us who you are in us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you receive that, put those hands together today. We hope you enjoyed this message. To hear more impactful messages just like this one, check us out at freelifechapel.org. We hope you have an amazing week.